Well, good morning, saints of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad in it. It is Worship Wednesday, August the 19th, 2020. We're blessed of God to see a brand new day. First and foremost, as always, to my fellowship family and then to all of our friends and loved ones who join us uh, by way of uh, this morning meditation. We greet you today, hoping and praying that all is well, all things considered. You've done your self check and in checking in with yourself, you discovered uh, that you're still blessed. You're still highly favored of God. And I'm just following up with your self check to do a more thorough check, making sure that you're OK, mind, body and soul. Let me dive in. Uh, don't want to mince words, don't want to waste time. Uh, again, I shared with you on yesterday, the Lord placed on my heart um, a series of scriptures uh, birthed from Ephesians chapter 6. And I want to dive back in in that sixth chapter. Yesterday, we dealt with verse 10. Today, I just want to look at real quickly verse 11. Um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Watch this. Paul writes, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yesterday we established something that I want to work from by way of a premise, and that is it is God's design and desire that every believer be developed. And his Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus was about how you should uh, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, how uh, as believers, we ought to become better uh, as church members. We ought to become better as husbands and as wives and as children. We ought to constantly become better being developed um, but then in the antithesis of that, it is the devil's design and desire to destroy. Uh, God wants to develop. The devil wants to destroy. He is the adversary of God's people. Uh, and here in that sixth verse, Paul brings to a crescendo, um, a, uh, an end of his discussion by saying, finally, in that 10th verse, um, we dealt with yesterday, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And then in verse 11, he picks up that thought and says, here's how you do it. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Let me ask this question. Men, have you ever got dressed, getting ready to leave, you left the house and Somewhere down the street, as you're driving, you discovered you left your wallet. Chances are you turned around, went back, you got it because you didn't feel equipped for your day without your billfold. Women, let me ask you the question. Have you ever left the house? You're dressed, fully dressed to the T. You're ready to go. You've gone down the street and discovered you left your purse. Chances are you turn around. You went back and you got it. Well, if you're not with me, let me ask you this question. Perhaps many of you can identify with this one. Have you ever got dressed, left the house, fully dressed, you're on your way wherever you're going and you discovered you left your cell phone? <laughs> I got you. Most of us will turn right around, go back and get it because without it, we don't feel equipped for the day. Now, I mentioned those things and they are uh, certainly uh, not essential to our apparel. Uh, they are accessories at best. Um, but the reality is without them, you feel ill equipped to handle your day. Paul here pushes in on a principle that as believers, we've got to understand. He makes the argument that we are engaged in a battle, in a war, an ongoing war. We didn't start it, 
Uh, and it'll be going on after we leave this place, but we are engaged in the war by virtue of the fact that we are saved. While God is trying to develop us, the devil is trying to destroy us simply because of whose we are. I'll talk about more of that, more about that later, about whose we are, not who we are, whose we are. Paul says in order to be ready for the battle that we are engaged in, he says, put on the whole armor of God. In other words, uh, we've got to be clothed in the right fashion to handle whatever battle we're going to be engaged in on any given day. Get this. He says, put on the whole armor of God, the entire armor of God, that ye may be able to stand. I need us to understand that um, standing is critical. As believers, our stance is critical. Um, the devil really wants us uh, to um, succumb and yield, and our posture will reflect that uh, yielding because no longer will we stand. As believers, we ought to stand tall, stand strong through any stress, through any situations that come our way. Paul says in order to do that, we've got to be um, equipped with the right armor. If you're not going to have on the right armor, you're not going to be able to stand. Well, what are we standing against? What are the forces that are trying to make us sit or bow or give in or give out? He says the wiles of the devil, the abelos, the wiles, what are the wiles? Glad you asked. Um, literally in the Greek, uh, methodia. It's the English word method. Let me help you if you don't understand. The devil has different methods by which he attacks. He studies us. He understands uh, where there are chinks in our armor, uh, where there are um, openings that we're vulnerable. And if he catches us ill-prepared or without the right armor on, He'll use any method necessary to attack so that he'll get you to bend or to bow and ultimately to break. Because again, it's God's desire to develop, but it's the devil's desire to destroy. And he does so through different methods. He's got many methods, many wiles, many tricks. He's tricky. And the same method that works for me may not work for you. But he's always going to study you and see where you're ill-prepared, ill-equipped, and or underdressed as it relates to your armor. And he's going to choose a method or a trick that will make you bow. Paul says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Christian soldier. My desire for you as it is for me and as it is for the entirety of the body of Christ, that we be able to stand because this is an evil day, that we may be able uh, to um, not bow, not bend, not break, but we are properly armed for the fight that we're in. This is spiritual warfare and every believer has to understand how to fight against an enemy that doesn't fight fair. He's got methods, he's got tricks, he's got wiles that are designed to destroy. My prayer for you and every believer is that we get um, to the place where we never leave home armed and dangerous. Let's pray. Father, in the strong name of Jesus, come we before you once again, grateful and thankful for another day's journey. We take not lightly nor for granted the fact that you kept us all night long and that you uh, guarded us and shielded us from all hurt, harm, danger, and or incident. And blessed are we to experience uh, a brand new day. Thank you, God, that you don't send us into battle unarmed. Thank you, God, that you never... Uh, allow us to engage the enemy and we don't have the opportunity uh, to be fully armed with the whole armor of God. 
God, we bless you and we thank you that um, ultimately this battle doesn't belong to us. It belongs to you. And we thank you ultimately that we understand uh, that the victory is already ours. We've just got to be prepared for the fight. We understand it's a daily struggle. It's a daily fight. We understand that it's spiritual warfare. And so God, equip these thy people uh, with that, the tenacity and the determination uh, to be ready, ready for that victory, ready for the battle, and ultimately ready to give you the glory because in the end, we know we win. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would uh, comfort and keep every believer as we're um, standing tall. Don't let anybody bow, don't let anybody break, but let us give you the glory and the honor as we come through every um, day of battle, recognizing that uh, when all is said and done, victory belongs to us. For it's in the name of Christ Jesus, we pray and ask it all, and we bless you and thank you in advance, and we say amen. Listen, hopefully, prayerfully, you got something out of this morning meditation. Uh, again, I'm looking forward to diving further and further in this particular pericope of scripture because I believe it's apropos for a season such as this. Um, the Lord bless you as always. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and give you peace today. As you shelter in place, you shelter in peace. And we'll see you again on tomorrow. Be blessed.